Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Shab Medina, and in front of me, I've got the HP ProLiant Microserver Gen 8, and this is by far the uh, best piece of hardware I've seen at the show this year. And Shab, can you talk a little bit about uh, what went into making this? Absolutely. So, um, those of you who are familiar with uh, the first generation uh, microserver ProLiant that we, uh, Gen 8 microserver, that we did in Gen 7, we learned quite a few things in doing it, right? Um, we noticed that um, uh, people were buying it, even though it's really targeted at the small business, people were buying it for home. We also noticed that um, there were customers who wanted to deploy it in the branch offices. And so we ended up with two very different requirements. We wanted, on one hand, it's somebody using it for a small home office. On the other hand, it's somebody branch office. So we had to combine those requirements, come out with something like this. So what you will see is we paid attention to uh, the industrial design. We also paid attention to uh, business level manageability. Uh, we solved uh, some other problems that we saw, uh, some other um, comments that we had gotten from customers, ease of servicing. This thing, you can service it using two thumb screws at the back. The top comes off, memory is easy, easily accessible, hard drives are right up front. Um, so everything is just designed to be, a lot of thought went into just making it easy to be used. In, in fact, things like people were losing their keys. So we got rid of keys and we put the lock inside. So it's still secure, but no keys to lose. That's a, that seems like a smart decision. Uh, so what are some of the things um, in terms of the uh, components inside that have changed between Gen 7 and Gen 8? So this is now an Intel architecture uh, microserver. So, uh, and with uh, 16 gig maximum RAM, it has a lot more horsepower than the previous one did. Uh, also, it has full uh, HP management engine, the ILO engine in it. So those are the major internal component upgrades that we've done. We've also sub supporting uh, three terabyte hard drives, so it gives you the full uh, 12 terabyte space. And are the, te the, uh, the drives that are used in this uh, the same kinds of swappable drives that are available in other ProLiant servers? So the other ProLiant servers use HP smart drives. This does not do that. We did not see a need for that. In the, in the market that we are targeting. And it, and it, so it, and it supports up to uh, four three terabyte drives? Up to four three terabyte drives. So 16 gigs of RAM, up to four three terabyte drives. Is the, the base configuration, um, how many drives does it come with and what, what size? Well, so the base config, con configuration does not come with any drives. Okay. Sim for the simple reason that um, people know what their drive requirements are, right? So uh, when you purchase it, at that point, you make the decision how many drives you want. That makes sense. And, and I'm noticing that, uh, so this top piece is actually not part of the server itself. It is, it is a network switch. That's correct. And it's got an interesting story. So, um, so you know, we, uh, we paid a lot of attention to industrial design, right? And, uh, and then we looked at the concept and, this, and, we, and we thought to ourselves, it would be such a shame if somebody took this beautiful box, and then stacked it up with ugly looking uh, uh, equipment. So we went to our networking uh, uh, teammates and we showed them what we were thinking of and said, you know, would you be interested in, uh, in doing something with us? And they looked at it and they said, absolutely. They, had, they just happened to have a switch on the roadmap coming, at, coming out at approximately the same time frame. And what they did was they took that, that concept and they modified the industrial design to uh, complement the microservers, and we ended up with two complementary products. It was uh, uh, a lot of things coming together at the same time. So, uh, and what it does is, I mean, when you buy a microserver, you're going to need, uh, you, you, you're going to, you, you will need a switch. That, that's what, how how you allow people to connect to it. So it's a, it was it's a perfectly complementary uh, solution. And, and uh, the server itself actually has three network ports, one of them being an ILO port. That's exactly right. So the way you would set it up is uh, one of your ports would be going to your wall, 
and that's what that's what gives you the connection to the outside world the other would connect into one of the eight ports over here and that would leave seven for users you could actually take one and put it into a wireless access point and uh, and then you would have up to six wired connections and quite a few more wireless connections all right is there anything else we should know about the microserver it's very customizable the way we did it was we wanted to give our partners the ability to customize these things for their own deployment so a company could uh, actually deploy it to their customers and using uh, and using uh, different colored bezels and customizable logos with their own logo and personalize these to their own company so, so so if I was a reseller, I could I could say put my company logo in, in place of the HP logo. Absolutely, you could do that, and then it would be yours. All right, well, and one other thing I can't tell because this is not powered on. How how quiet is this as a unit? Because I assume based on the industrial design, the the assumption is that this may be sitting out in the workplace somewhere, um, not relegated to a to a uh, server room. Absolutely. Okay, so I am so glad you asked that question. That because that was one other another one of our design criteria. Um, our customer base exists worldwide. The target customer is a, sure, a branch office, but also a micro business that may have never owned a server before. And, and we think of servers as something that sit in a closet in the back someplace. But uh, for, these, uh, for these new businesses, it, this server would have to sit in their conference room table maybe, right? So we had to design something that was very quiet and not just for them, but also for our customers in um, parts of the world where air conditioning is not very common and you have almost no ambient noise. So this uses a very large fan at the back and because it's large compared to the size, we can rotate it very slowly. And it's very quiet, it's, it's as quiet as a desktop PC. So yeah, small, quiet, our, our tagline internally, we talk about it's small, it's quiet and it looks good anywhere you keep it. I, I would definitely agree that it looks good. Um, I think this is something like if I wanted to incorporate it into my uh, my home theater to to store like um, you know photos and, and video clips and things like that, that um, I could probably it would probably pass the wife acceptance test. Totally, totally. Uh, I don't know if I would go as far as to try and convince her to keep it in your living room, but everything every place else is fair game. All right. Well, thanks, Shab. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me.